Welcome to another Conversations with Architects program. Uh, today we have a uh, guest, uh, Mrs. Helen Castle, uh, and uh, she is the editor of Architectural Design uh, magazine, AD, uh, and also he's, she is the commissioning editor of on the UK Architectural List at John uh, Wiley, mm -hmm. as far as I know. Uh, and she started to work uh, at architectural design in early 90s. In the early 90s, yes, that <laughs> yes. long ago now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she, uh, she came back uh, as an editor. She is or originally an uh, historian, archi yes, uh, art, art historian, but you have mm. masters in architectural history, yeah, as far as I know. The Bartlett, uh, yeah. UCLA and mm -hmm. uh, Bartlett School of Art, Art and History. Uh, and it's a very nice coincidence uh, that I, I was uh, talking to Helen just be before uh, this recording that I was in UK in 1990s and I was uh, uh, making my PhD research and my major topic was architectural criticism and I was trying to get into uh, some comparative analysis mm -hmm. of the architectural magazines, including mm -hmm. AD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it is a really nice coincidence that years mm -hmm. after, uh, once again, uh, we are talking about the magazine. And uh, of course, many things had been changed yeah. since then. Yeah. Uh, but maybe before getting into that, uh, uh, not specifically, on uh, architectural design, but mm. in this fair of architectural publishing yeah. and media, mm. lots of things had been changed. Mm. Now we have a digital media, mm -hmm. which seems to be an alternative uh, track, not only in terms of the methodology of publishing, mm -hmm. but also the content, content how it uh, spreads and how it is open to mm -hmm. interaction, interactive contributions, etc. So maybe we can start there, how it affected all these things within the years. So can you look, where, where do you locate within all this sphere, the current architectural design magazine? Um, it's, it's a big question and it's a question that anyone in publishing is thinking about all the time yeah, yeah. because um, the shift is so enormous and um, you cannot afford to stand still and not mm. think about it. And the publisher I work for um, is really taking on the whole transition. And they're looking at um, a, a, a transition situation where um, e-learning um, and online learning and accreditation are going to be really important things um, because they they, they're really a, a textbook and a professional publisher. Um, and that's where they see the future mm. and the future growth as well. But on the other hand, um, I think the editorial part of publishing remains very important. Mm -hmm. It remains important for subject knowledge and also the network that you have. Um, and the, at, at the core still, despite the transition, is book and journal publishing. Mm -hmm. And although we've had electronic, AD has been published electronically for almost 10 years mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. um, through the Wiley Online platform. But it's the simulation of the hard copy. It's it's a, exactly. That's, mm -hmm. It's still a kind of post-production mm -hmm. model. And that's mm -hmm. what you've seen in book publishing, a lot of mm -hmm. magazine mm -hmm. publishing as well. It's not really shifted. And I think the last three or four years you've had the tablet has come mm -hmm. through very strongly, so social media has come through very strongly. And with that, um, but the, you, you've, you've had apps, etc. But I think the next change, which everyone is going to really have to push on, is, is mobiles and how you going to get mm -hmm. content in a way which is short enough, digestible enough mm -hmm. for mobiles and is reflowable mm -hmm. as well. So for architecture, which is so highly visual, mm -hmm. that, that is a real challenge and that's something that everybody's got to think about. 
Um, but I think kind of going back to your question about how do you work with social media, mm. there, is n there is no one way. Mm. You know, you've got to think yeah, back, yeah, yeah, you've, you've got to think back with um, when, when radio used to predominate, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then TV came in and mm -hmm. everyone thought, oh, radio is going to die. Uh -huh. Radio didn't die, yeah, but true. you're going to have simultaneous media. Um, but what has happened is you no longer got the domination of a broadcasting media. You've got mm. social media, which is responding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to things and individuals responding to things. So the kind of responsibility is taken away from the, solely from the media and individuals have now um, able to enter the framework. But I think what's interesting with architects is they still want to be in print or mm -hmm. they still want to be in the electronic magazine and they're using often social media as a route to get into it um, but it's it's all those things happening at the same time actually I, there is a significant difference uh, as far as I uh, recognize mm. uh, between uh, those simulated versions of already existing uh, hard copy magazines mm. but there is an alternative channel which mm. is more open to contributions and you cannot follow uh, whether there is an editorial board, yes. somebody else, etc. So it is like hundreds, thousands of images are appearing at a time. So it's uncurated. Uh, yeah, uncurated. It's, yeah, this. it's simultaneous. Uh, simultaneous. It's, it's a different stream altogether. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's much more instant. It's faster. Now, I think what you've got to look at is there's, there's going to be, you've got to look at the speed of media mm -hmm. um, and a lot of conversa conversations. Often I'm asked, well, you know, with AD being a magazine, well, it's not quite a magazine. We haven't had the same problems as news-driven print mm -hmm. media yeah, yeah. Um, because they're so dependent, whereas they've been taken on by Arc Daily and Dazine mm -hmm. and all the online news mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. magazines. Um, whereas, because we're at a, we're at the point where we're between a book and a mm -hmm. magazine, we're faster than a book, slightly slower than a magazine or news-driven magazine. That's actually been an advantage in a strange way, because we're commissioning articles which reflect a little bit, mm -hmm. and there is still within academia um, the appetite and among architects for that kind of more reflexive mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of look at things. But on the other hand, I'm very aware of things like um, word counts, for mm. instance. Um, I really cap articles at about 2,000, 2,500 words because I think um, long, long articles don't make better articles. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, people want things which are fairly digestible and mm -hmm. quick. Um, and it's, it's also, AD's always had this sort of particular position. It's, it's not academic. Is mm -hmm. between the kind of really theoret theoretical magazines mm -hmm. and the kind of professional or news-driven yeah. architecture magazines. That, that's that's how mm. I classified it. Yeah, this is what I was. Yeah. This yeah, is what yeah, I was going to ask you about I mean, where yeah, you the, the, the positioned it. The architectural review, for example, is mm. a professional magazine, whereas Assemblage mm. is a the then it mm. was a very academic magazine, but AD mm. was in between, both targeting the architects. Mm -hmm and uh, the academicians at the mm. time. So it had a kind of a power actually mm. to both be effective in two cultural domains, mm -hmm. within the professionals, within the academicians. So it was kind of a, a transitory medium. Mm. Uh, and it, it, I think it's very significantly important. Otherwise, mm. I mean, we may be in a position of uh, talking the same thing in two different ways. Right. And there may be mm. some discontinuities between the concepts issues, etc. Uh, I don't know how it is today, actually, because I'm within the, all these uh, uh, hundreds and millions of sites and mm. image, uh, images, mm. uh, etc. It is very difficult to uh, trace what's mm. happening. Uh, but um, I think it, it, the, the, the magazine, AD, has, still has a power in I the think... architectural domain. Do, do you think that? I mean, well, People seem to still pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I think people like curated content mm -hmm. because of, you know, as you say, there's all these images going around, there's this sort of speed. P 
people don't always know what to pay attention to. Mm. So um, every issue, AD comes out bi-monthly, mm. so six issues a year, uh -huh. and each one is framed, if you like, mm -hmm. with a theme. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that uh, that means that uh, that that kind of level of curated content mm -hmm. m it gives people an understanding of is this an important theme or is it something I'm interested in? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's very important. And I'm within publishing, I feel very, very strongly that a lot of publishers have saved money on editorial mm -hmm. side of publishing mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. because um, they've had to kind of save money on the bottom line. And I think if publishing is going to exist as an industry, it needs to continue to invest in editors, as curators, and development developers that's, of content. That's so yes, and because otherwise, why exist? Why not? You'll become a packager, basically. You obtain mm. a kind of a power mm. to uh, set the agenda, but mm -hmm. also it, in return, it also defines a sense mm. of responsibility, Ability, yeah. uh, which is not easy mm -hmm. uh, to tackle with. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes, uh, and. It was very dominant, as far as I remember, mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, between 90s, uh, 90s and mm -hmm. 2000. I mean, every issue was coming out to uh, redesign uh, uh, the, the architectural environment in yeah. terms of what is going to be discussed and what concepts, issues, etc. So, for example, the postmodernism uh, topic had been. Uh, nearly um, uh, re represented uh, the, the, uh, by the uh, magazine, and it, it, it was a period. All these, uh, um, uh, not, not only Charles Jenks, but, but uh, also deconstruction. You deconstruction, had, you yes. had postmodernism, deconstruction, mm -hmm. and even classicism, classicism all going yes, on yes, at the uh, same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Prince Charles. Uh, yes, the whole uh, yeah, Prince the, Charles the, debate and the yeah, sort of style Prince, yeah, debates yeah, yeah. that were uh -huh, going uh -huh. on. What was interesting was when I came to AD in the early 2000s, um, I had to look at it and say it, it, it seemed a little bit dated because suddenly the notion of kind of framing movements, if you mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. um, or styles didn't uh, really work. It worked isms, really, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. isms. Uh -huh. it really worked very well in the 80s or the 1990s, but it, it, it didn't really seem relevant. And that's when um, we took a real interest in technology, in the digital stuff, and asking questions about technology. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that really worked for mm -hmm. us. We had, we've had some... Culture as well. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Culture Both issues. social, cultural, mm -hmm. and technological Technology. issues, and also urban issues. Mm -hmm. I think those are probably the kind of strongest themes in AD in the last 10 years or so that we've really dealt with. What do you think? I mean, today, what, what, what does AD represent? Uh, what in terms it? of in, in terms of architectural medium, I mean, how how do you identify the significant place of AD? What what does it represent? I think, as you say, it's it's this position between the the academic and the professionals, mm -hmm. and also a place to reflect, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. I think AD is being used in a different way because um, our biggest audience are receiving it as students through the Wiley Online Library. So we get about 30,000 downloads a month mm -hmm. of individual articles. Mm -hmm. So they're not always looking at it as a whole issue. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They might be doing a project and then they'll read an individual article. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, when I came, when I started editing AD, I kind of reworked, we sort of reworked it over the years in terms of format. Mm -hmm. But an important thing was, for instance, we put in leader lines, we put in captions, so that you can kind of, you can read it at a kind of caption level and a leader line level, and also into kind of main text level as well. That, that's mm. very important. I mm. mean, it, it of course multiplies the mm. uh, number of audience mm. and the cultural levels that, that, they are, that are interested. So what, how, how do you... Uh, draw the borders in terms of what is going to be in in the magazine and what is not maybe well it's it's more more difficult to decide what's not going to take place in the uh, well ad is there a border like that of course I i'll tell you what this what the sort of whole process is mm. um every issue of ad is guest edited mm. um 
Now, so what is key is firstly who the guest editor is going to be yes. and what the theme is. Uh -huh. Now, that is quite a kind of, I have more proposals than I can ever possibly do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have an awful lot of interest um, because I think a lot of um, young architects and academics have seen it as a really kind of an important tool in their careers. That's true, yes. And um, so I have a kind of whole network of people that I talk to about mm. architecture, about um, guest editing issues. And um, often some I was, people will say, can I send you a proposal? And I say, no, don't send me a proposal. Just tell me what theme you'd like to do. Mm. And then we'll have a chat about it. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly organic. So. I agree with someone, yes, let's do a theme, mm -hmm. how we do it. Then they'll do a proposal and they'll suggest people. Uh -huh. That's really interesting. And then um, about 10 months beforehand, we have a final proposal. Mm -hmm. So they really sort of have then spoken to people and have really keyed in. But I will have always keep talking to people and suggesting other people to them. There's mm -hmm. also a review process so that we send out the proposal to other people to look at. Mm -hmm. So we keep uh, we keep bringing people in, and also the kind of um, the geography is very imp important for AD because it's really got to be international. I mean, you could probably look at it and say actually there's a very strong US UK bias, but we always try and include stuff mm -hmm. from around the world as well. And the context is inevitably including this mm -hmm. all these international issues mm -hmm. because lots of now. Uh, Architects from Britain are working all around the yes, world, and yeah. uh, I mean, it is very difficult to follow locality, but mm -hmm. an international sense of architecture mm -hmm. becomes valid uh, mm -hmm. in every geography, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's becoming a kind of a very complicated uh, it discussion. It has become a complicated, yeah. and it, but it's very interesting. I think that. That sense of the local is, and mm. that's something we've looked at as well, is that kind of locality. We always do an issue every year on a different area. Mm -hmm. We've done an issue on Turkey mm. um, a few years ago. We've done one on Italy. We've done one on Latin America. Um, mm. We're doing one on um, the Gulf at the moment for 2015. And then I've commissioned one from Brazil for 2016. So we'll take individual issues and they tend to often be more about the urban um, and, and look at those, but also within each issue, we try and get contributors from different countries as well involved. Then, mm -hmm. can we say that there is still a sense of centrality yeah, there is. and periphery in terms of architecture? There is, and I think, you know, also it's a lot to do with publishing in English. Mm. So even if you've got architects from around the world, often they've been American or UK educated as well. So mm. they're in that kind of network. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They're in a kind of US, UK network, even if they might be um, practicing in Turkey or, yeah, or practicing in Japan, you know. Yeah. So, or China, mm. you know, you, mm. the, the whole education system has been so internationalized, but there's still, I don't know, there's there's still a kind of locality. I was talking to an architect yesterday and she was talking about her interests and, and, and the fact that she'd been at, her, at the AA at the certain time. Mm. You could just tell mm. from her in particular interest in the material, for yeah, instance. Yeah. But mm. what I feel is, uh, I mean, there is a, a hidden sense of centrality. I don't want to call it West-East mm. issue, but uh, I don't know, a kind of a mainstream. Mm. Uh, where, I mean, there's a significant dominancy of mm. still uh, maybe uh, Britain, mm. uh, UK, uh, some other European mm. countries and especially United States mm. of America. Uh, so they are... Um, uh, the UK has been very... I mean, I think there's... They are setting the standards. Yeah, and and it's, uh, it's come from two... Th I mean, I think the English language, they've uh -huh. had a huge advantage. But also um, in educate the the English language has also meant that they've been able to sort of export education. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of people come That's to the true, UK yeah. and US to get educated for that uh -huh. reason. But also when the uh, the economy dived basically mm -hmm. four or five years ago, um, a lot of the big practices in London and the US were very successful in exporting their work to the Middle East and to Asia as well. Um, 
the likes of HOK and SOM and Gensler mm. um, and Arup and um, Fosters and Zaha, they all um, have very successfully worked in those areas. Do they also represent a, a kind of a, a significant similarity in terms of their architectural behavior? Or, I mean, is it, is it just uh, I a, think a geography free tendency? Or is it maybe technology bound, knowledge bound, culture yeah, bound? I don't know. I think, yeah, it's very difficult to. Um, I think culturally, say, Foster's is quite different from That's SOM. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but, yes. SOM is usually understood as a kind of a more business yeah, oriented very, firm. Yeah, yeah, much I, more business it, orientated. And we look from here, yeah. But on the other hand, you know, ve there's a very kind of strong sense of investment in technology and research mm -hmm. that's gone that's on true, in yeah. those big practices as engineering, well. Engineering, yeah. And engineering. Yeah, site that's, is very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, but some of the, the sort of me medium-sized practi UK practices have also kind of reached out, like Allies Morrison and think were, they were medium-sized, but they've got bigger... Um, are working outside the UK as well. When you look at mm. architectural history books, uh, I mean, most of the examples, maybe we are trying to understand mm. uh, all the isms and the history of architecture, meaning of mm. architecture, why are maybe, I don't know, 500 examples mm. or 1,000 examples, I don't know, it is really an... Uh, reductionist manner mm. of uh, putting mm. things together uh, to make them more clearly mm. understandable. But I mean, w within that, uh, the issue of locality mm. and anything non-Western or mm. non-central uh, cannot find easily a place within that uh, bulk of knowledge. Uh, yeah. is, it, is it something natural with respect to economy, uh, dominancy in politics and uh, language-based issues, or is it is it a kind of a? I mean, when you look at the accumulation, the the heritage, mm. is it the case, or I mean, uh, how, how do you look? I think uh, there has been there have been forces which have really tried hard. I mean, I think what the Aga Khan Foundation, yeah, for instance, true, yeah. has done uh -huh, is absolutely uh -huh. fantastic, and they've uh, they've brought attention to really wonderfully crafted buildings mm -hmm. with a very strong sense of community mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and they've brought them to the world stage and they've they've got them across people's you know into magazines online they would have those projects would never been brought to people's attention mm -hmm. i think and i think that's very important um that that we that that continues, but there aren't many other ways that yeah, that, it, that those kind of projects can be brought to people's attention. Uh, in, in a mm. meeting which was organized mm. in Pakistan by the uh, Ahan committee, mm. uh, I thought that I mean I, I see Ahan award as something, uh, a kind of a toy given the others in mm. quotations to play in their back garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I mean it's, it's I mean. If it is a kind of a, a quality architecture and mm. uh, good buildings, it yeah. is good anywhere. But, yeah. uh, but I'm talking about uh, the the more uh, reproduction kind of architecture. Not uh, not so vernacular. I mean, there's yeah, a sort yeah, of yeah, tradition yeah. of the vernacular. Only, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because mm. when we look at, for example, Gulf region, mm. even Turkey, most of the emerging countries, mm. uh, now the architectural produced is just a simulation of whatever mm -hmm. happening in the international era. So, I mean, there is no sense of uh, locality at all. No, I think... So when I look mm -hmm. at, for example, uh, Foster, when mm -hmm. they go to Kazakhstan, yeah. I mean, they don't tend to do uh, either anything related with the mm -hmm. local issues or, I mean, they take it to the extreme that mm -hmm. they are simulating a tent, for example, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. as a modern building. I mean, in between, you cannot find anything. Well, it was very interesting. I went to, when I went to Abu Dhabi, I went to a Mazda. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that is an example of something where they've tried, Fosters have really tried to do something significantly different. Yeah, that, and that's there, a very unique project. It's a unique well. project. Uh -huh. And there are rather a lot of gizmos which mm. aren't needed like this sort of under underground transport but the really good thing about it after you've spent a week in dubai 
just getting there and being able to, to walk through um, narrow, shaded streets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that just kind of makes perfect sense after kind That's of true. spending your whole time in air-conditioned offices and hotels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I think that was a unique project, but there's always going to be the problem for global architects mm -hmm. that they're going to they're going to, they're they're being asked by clients basically to produce a foster building, yeah, which true. is yeah. you know it's all about kudos, it's all about um, lending value in a particular way to some sort of scheme. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of playing a game. Um, That's perfectly true. Mm. Frank Gehry was saying in, in, in one of his interviews mm. that if I design anything mm. which doesn't look like Guggenheim, mm. uh, uh, people became disappointed. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, that is the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's that the is, problem. You know, they're, 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 they're getting, they're getting, people are coming to them, they, people go to Zaha, they want a Zaha building. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, and she does it. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. I, mm. it, it, it became a kind of a, a really, Zaha is, is another mm. issue to be mm. maybe talked with hours and hours because when I look at my uh, students, I mean, she's mm. very popular mm. uh, in Turkey as, as any uh, elsewhere. Mm. And uh, even though we define a, for example, kindergarten project in mm. a small village, whatever it is, independent from the context, mm. there are a series of uh, simulations of Zaha mm -hmm. in any studio. <laughs> so it became the ism by, her, uh, by itself. <laughs> and we don't know where the roots are coming from, what is this case. So, so the danger with the uh, digital media, I think, mm. something may become a kind of a, uh, a may, may be appreciated and uh, may be open to reproduction uh, without any critical background yeah. or any discussion. It's just all because about of image. The, the re yeah, repetition of the image for a hundred times, it, it, it's, it becomes uh, suddenly as if it's something positive mm. uh, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's right because the proliferation of a particular image mm -hmm. becomes predominant. Yeah, that's true. And um, images works so much better on social mm. media than anything else That's true. you know well particularly in facebook mm. something like twitter mm -hmm. you have to have very quick witty quips That's for true. it to work you know uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but still it's quite difficult in a sort of more extended critical way to work i think there's always been uh, there's always been a tendency for strong styles Mm -hmm. in architecture mm -hmm. you know you have to look back at modernism and there's always been a st the tendency for strong styles but it does remove the dialogue from the image it removes the text from the image mm -hmm. that is a big issue um, i think one of the one of the things actually i've commissioned an issue for 2015 which i'm really looking forward to and that's on the rural and architecture mm -hmm. i think there's been a huge amount of interest in the city and, um, you know, I think young architects are interested in the city and the diversity of the city. And, and that is probably where they leave behind the kind of more formal work mm -hmm. like Zaha and become interested in um, the kind of natural composition and, and the kind of chaos of a city. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps we need to do the same for the rural and to look at things which are more site-specific and can work in the context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, but um, what I see, especially in Turkey, yes. I mean, it's uh, uh, the, the uh, rural architecture or vernacular mm. or traditional, whatever it is, um, uh, doesn't take enough appreciation in the way that, I mean, it can be uh, understood, discussed, and mm. uh, kind of contribute to the knowledge of architecture. It's not so shiny enough. It's not shiny enough, yes. I mean, we're doing a book um, with Michael Hensel, who, who um, teaches now in Oslo, who was at the AA. And uh, it's something I'm very interested in is the fact that there's this kind of deep vernacular knowledge, particularly around sort of, you know, climatic conditions, mm. like mm. in Turkey, you mm. know, you, mm. you, you didn't need air conditioning 
because mm -hmm. the building um, with very low energy, you didn't need in, even hardly any energy supply because you had shutters, you had different screens. That's true, yeah. Um, and, you know, you need kind of higher energy when you've got glass buildings and air conditioning and things. So there is perhaps there is a route to doing contemporary architecture which doesn't mimic mm -hmm. the vernacular in terms of kind of producing kind of a pastiche mm. yeah, that's but actually uses terms, the tech yeah, yeah which are, actually uses oh. the technologies or ancient technologies to do a new kind of architecture but it is difficult unless something is shiny attractive and exciting to get students attention yeah, that's that's mm. true um, how how do you see is this is this the first time you're coming to Turkey or you've been there? I've been to Turkey before but I've not been to Istanbul mm -hmm. so no it's really exciting but you made a special issue on uh, oh, contemporary Turkey. architecture yeah. in Turkey mm. so you have a general mm. uh, idea uh, how how do you see the uh, contemporary architectural scene in Turkey well it's really I can't pretend that I know anything about uh, mm. the contemporary scene here. It's only what I'm really s hearing secondhand from people. Mm -hmm. um, Do you know any Turkish architects, for example? Not really, no. <laughs> no, I've only people I've met while I've been here. So I, I can't really, I can't make so a judgment. So I'm the first Turkish architect, <laughs> you bet. <laughs> I've met a few, a few architects while I'm here, but I can't pretend that I've got a deep knowledge at all. I think, oh. I think that... Um, I think there's a kind of modesty when people are always talking to me and they're saying, you know, um, there's a kind of modest modesty about um, Turkish architecture. And I, I'm not quite sure where that comes from because in a way, um, you know, you've got a very ancient uh, tradition, yes, fantastic true. tradition mm -hmm. of historical buildings, mm -hmm. but also of modernism as well in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, that's true. And um, I think the Turks are very canny. I think they've, they've always been at the kind of geographically at the crossroads as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and to take advantage of the situation in the Middle East and Europe and the States. Um, and, and also well-educated, yes. you know, quite so many, mm -hmm. you know, everyone is speaking English to me and have such a wide knowledge of... You know, not often you go to a country. If you go to the U.S., you mm. wouldn't you wouldn't find that architects would be able to talk about you know mm. the international scene or what was that's happening true. in elsewhere yeah, in the true. world, like <laughs> Turkish architects yeah, can, true. and maybe just having a little bit more confidence or a sense of what they can go out and do is is important. But just looking at Istanbul within maybe a few hours and. Mm -hmm. as an image what, what do you feel i mean when you look at the city i um well nat the sort of natural setting on the bosphorus mm -hmm. is just that second is. to none uh -huh. but i think the other thing is just the amount of rebuilding uh -huh. that is it's just kind of like the construction is going on every street mm -hmm. all over yeah. the place and you know that, that uh, talking to people for instance about the whole sort of urban development program that's going on at the moment yeah, is 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 intriguing there was a know. panel on that mm. urban development program and i mm. i have shown um, two comparative pictures one of them was the oxford street in mm. london and i showed that it was like this mm. in 18 yeah. uh, something and now it is like this so you cannot uh, feel the difference mm -hmm. if you don't see the people and the cars maybe mm -hmm. because it's staying still but it's very difficult to find such places in Istanbul and I, I have shown some some photographs from Istanbul this is mm -hmm. 10 years ago this is five years ago <laughs> and this is today and there was an immense alteration and change so uh, I mean on one hand it may be seen as development and mm -hmm. uh, modernization mm -hmm. whatever it is but on the other hand, of course, it is uh, blurring the sources of culture mm. into something else, and it's very, it, the, the identity is shifting to mm -hmm. something else. And I think we have to, uh, we are not seeking for a kind of a, uh, I don't know, maybe 
uh, a local architecture or something, mm. but uh, it is not, it's the same problem everywhere mm -hmm. in the world that uh, global architecture, I mean, comes without any uh, context, yeah. context mm -hmm. respect. Yeah, that, that, that is, I think, the basic issue. And it, it uh, houses itself uh, in, in a more free and uh, accelerated way mm. in geographies like Turkey, mm. when there is no critical distance to yeah. what is happening actually. In, in that sense, the, the critical uh, discussion is, is significantly important. I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 it, uh, there's positives and negatives about mm. it. I mean, in the UK, things are so slow, can be so slow, and the planning mm. process um, can be because you don't have the yeah. pressure of population economy yeah. as much as felt in. But Turkey. we do we do have a huge housing shortage in London now, mm -hmm. um, and and part part of that is a problem with basically um, foreign investors coming and buying up mm. um, housing within central London, and it actually means that um, even fairly well wealthy young professionals just can't afford. Uh, flats mm -hmm. within London mm -hmm. or even the, sub the suburbs of London, it's become prohibitively expensive because it's just been so attractive for people from the Middle East and Asia and um, it's been a very kind of, it's been a safe haven and really. International mm. city, yes. So there is an issue really about housing and, and being able to have affordable housing for the people who are living and working in London. Uh, and. Um, do you have a chance to follow, I mean, the, the uh, especially the British architects mm. who are working in Turkey? Did, did, have you, uh, uh, well, I come across odd schemes, you know, they're like, I think there have been big design competitions, mm. people yeah, like, that's, yeah, the, like Zaha, were, and I remember uh -huh. Ken Yang did one as well. Yes. Uh -huh. um, but it's often quite difficult, you'll see a design competition and then you don't know if those things ever really get built uh -huh, as well. Uh -huh. Yeah. In Zaha's case, and uh, it, mm. it hasn't been realized, mm. so it was a kind of a planning competition, mm. including, of course, some mm. building images, but it hasn't been mm. realized. But I think there are some other ongoing building scale mm. uh, projects. Uh, Norman Foster is realizing mm. a building in uh, central Istanbul. Uh, I know that uh, Frank Gehry has a proposal, mm. and uh, Za is coming back, mm -hmm. as far as I know. <laughs> uh, uh, Peter Eisenman is mm -hmm. designing something in for Istanbul. What is what is the feeling among the um, the community of architects in Istanbul? Do they feel that those big projects, in terms of status, shouldn't go to international architects? That they should be given to to Turkish architects? There are different positions mm. actually, because some of them uh, think that it is good to be uh, collaborating mm. with those big firms mm. because, I mean, uh, independent from what is produced, mm. the knowledge uh, comes to Turkey. Mm. The, I mean, how an institutional office works and mm. what kind of a quality produced mm. Uh, mm. throughout the projects, etc. That, that is something. Mm. Well admired, mm. but on the other hand, there is a group, of course, reacting as if I mean, uh, those offices do not really represent uh, their uh, full existence uh, within the medium of architecture. Mm. So they see Turkey as a kind of a peripheral land, so they mm. don't care much attention. But it's a problem all around the world mm. because I mean, um, uh, there used to be. Uh, I'm always giving this example. Uh, in 1950s or something, mm. when you are educated in France, mm. uh, they give you a diploma uh, which is titled Bon Parorian, which is, I mean, you can only work in East with that diploma, you cannot uh, work in West. So mm. there were uh, kind of a uh, standard difference. Uh, yeah, so it's these. kind of so, well, Most of the curiosity is about that uh, whether, I mean, they, they accept this ground as a kind of a uh, first degree mm. uh, project or that they, they just use their names and mm. give it because some of the offices do that really mm. I mean they have lots of branch offices they uh, market their labels mm. and names and but they do not really became inspirational mm. and I have seen in Turkey there are lots of for example international uh, firms uh, giving proposals uh, mm. to some projects 
uh, but they do not do anything unique, but they, they just take something out it's from their archive a, and yeah, they, they mix, it up, mix yeah. it up and then mm -hmm. uh, within 10 or 15 days they develop a mm -hmm. proposal. Even sometimes they do not come mm -hmm. to Turkey. For example, in um, the Kartal case, which was a big competition, uh, it was about the planning of a district in mm -hmm. Istanbul, a very large district and uh, uh, there were lots of entries, international mm -hmm. entries, uh, etc. Uh, I mean, on one hand, uh, you cannot understand. I mean, even in two or three months' time, uh, nobody can understand the situation. Mm. You cannot walk around the streets. You but, need a really uh, intimate yeah. knowledge yeah. To, to plan a district. So, I mean, mm. what, what you can do is just you can introduce an image and mm. your power that you are capable to do this. So, mm. I mean... If I get the job, I will think and I will start and over. And then do the research. So the yeah. uh, product doesn't represent the real mm. solution, the real case, but a capacity or a possibility of mm. uh, the office uh, that that uh, may uh, mm. uh, do that. So these are some uh, issues I think uh, concerning. But uh, the other cases, many of the Turkish architectural uh, offices are working together with international offices all around the world. Mm -hmm. Not in Turkey, limited with Turkey, especially in Turkic geographies, uh, in former mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Soviet Union, mm -hmm. uh, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, mm -hmm. uh, Kazakhstan, uh, or Dubai, mm -hmm. uh, Gulf region in general, mm -hmm. uh, even in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of uh, Turkish offices because, I mean, uh, the architectural offices has a more flexible organization mm. in Turkey. They can act very quickly, they can uh, produce very quickly. It's, I think also, it was, I, was, I was talking to um, some of the editors at Yemen, and they were saying to me, for instance, I was talking about building standards, mm -hmm. and you know, that th you obviously have national standards here, but you're also using, um, there's a kind of a, a kind of very adaptive approach mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, taking sustainability standards from 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 LEED or mm, BR Beam Beam, Beam, yeah. or understanding, you know, what a client wants mm, and, mm. and just being very, very flexible. Mm -hmm. And um, I think seeing that as, as a positive rather than thinking, well, you don't have your own standard mm -hmm. is very important. What mm. do you see, what do you think, what will happen next? <laughs> <laughs> Here or, or in the in, rest in, of the in world? General, <laughs> in the rest of it's the world. It's always very general. difficult to <laughs> say what is going to happen next. I think in terms of technology, I was asked this question and we did mm -hmm. a, we did a, uh, we've just published a title on robots. Mm -hmm. And I think um, where it's, you know, we had the whole emphasis on the digital, on um, computerized design, computation. But now I think it's going to be on the sort of the creation, the making, robotics, automation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to shift yeah. to, the, to, 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 the, to the world of things. You know, mm -hmm. you're seeing Apple also investing in, in um, the kind of whole home mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. having smart homes as well. So I think there's going to be a big shift over the next few years into that kind of area. Third mission age. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I think that, that <laughs> in terms of technology, where that's going, I mean, there's, there's interest in 3D printing and 4D printing mm. and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we're always kind of looking at the, we're, we're doing an issue on space architecture at the moment. Mm. <laughs> so it's always kind of diverse in terms of where we're going with things. Um, and within our sort of, I mean, AD is, has been well known for doing stuff on the digital, but on the other hand, our other kind of strength has been on talking about perception, about experience. We, we publish Yohani Plasma, yeah, Eyes of the Skin, mm. you know, thinking about the real built qualities of buildings mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important debate that needs to go on. And I think it needs to be a de debate that is not regarded as reactionary you know mm -hmm. it's it's it, it you know really kind of um i think when people visit buildings they get excited and that's they really experience 
really good spaces and that's something that I think hasn't been lost. I think when, with, sometimes that comes through in social media that people want to take photos of something they've actually been to and mm -hmm, they've physically mm -hmm. experienced as well. So I think that's a very important aspect of architecture that we mustn't kind of lose. It mustn't become about the image. Is there any oh. uh, buildings recently realized uh, which you can classify as really innovative, different, I mean, which you suggest anybody who is going to go to England, uh, London to visit? Or oh, that's really difficult. Difficult to give names always. Oh, no, <laughs> Address I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. Is it because, I mean, there are none or No, I think many, it too is. Many. Yeah, I think it's... Like if people say to me, who's the next people coming through? It's very, very difficult because you have these dominance of these big mm. practices and you're not really seeing work at that, particularly public work at the kind of, it's much harder for younger practices to come through. They tend to be more collaborative as well. Mm -hmm. So they're less about name. That's true, yes, yes. Um, Bigger offices has more chance, yeah. inevitably. Yeah, more chance. Boutique offices are disappearing, yeah. <laughs> inevitably, <laughs> everywhere in the I world. I think one of the interesting things which happened um, in London, we, we had something called the Sensing, um, uh, Sensing Places exhibition at the Royal Academy, and mm -hmm. um, in which sort of small structures were were commissioned from architects all over the world. So mm. trying to really show architecture in a different way as well was interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you want to add or? Uh, <laughs> no, I think that's ask, about. Uh, I think that's about it, really. But um, I'm kind of really curious about Turkey, and I've. I'd, having come for the first time I'd, I'd like to really kind of continue to follow the scene and to learn more about mm -hmm. it yeah this may be a basis mm. for having mm. a better communication yeah. and interaction yeah. and uh, maybe we can contribute more yeah. uh, to architectural design uh, and uh, uh, really thank you very much for well, being with you. us and mm -hmm. uh, uh, within this short notice <laughs> and uh, short time uh, I think it was a very nice to meet you, first of all, and mm. then having this conversation uh, and uh, hope to uh, be with you again in <laughs> Turkey. Uh, thanks a lot. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs>